I make tons of money making videos, but I have neglected Iron Men, and they need love too. One of the biggest pains as an Iron Man is making enough GP for things like making planks, for construction, buying runes, and also paying for the Kingdom of Miscellanea. So these are the top 20 best ways to make money as an Iron Man, and these also work in Leagues 3, which is out in a few weeks, and I have even included a special money maker specific to Leagues. So we're going to start off with the ones with the lowest requirements and work our way up. First thing you want to do as an Iron Man is always go to the Stronghold of Security and claim your free 10k from the chest there for some starting cash. You only need to do the first 3 floors for the 10k and if you're a hardcore Iron Man you may want to just do the first 2 floors for 5k as the creatures on the 3rd floor can hit 9s. Next up I recommend training your magic as the sooner you can get to level 55 and be able to use high alchemy the faster you're going to make GP. And this one is not just only a good money maker, but it also lets you train up your magic at the same time too, and it's the Zamorak Warriors. You want to buy a fire staff from Zaf by Varric Square, and also some mines and air runes from the shop, you will need twice as many air runes as you do mind runes. Next, use the minigames Teleport to Castle Wars, and run north, just past the observatory. There's also an altar here if you do have the prayer level, you can simply leave protection prayer on, but you don't need them. Go down the ladder and to the first lava pool just to the east and you will notice a Zamorak warrior. Attack it and stand to the north of the lava pool which will act as an obstacle. Zami warriors have absolutely no magic defense whatsoever so even with level 1 magic, no gear and just the fire staff you hit almost all of the time. Use fire strike if you're level 13 magic or an airstrike if you're below that level. They drop 100 GP a lot of the time which pays for the runes and they also have a 1 in 25 chance to drop a rune dagger which is 4k profit, a 1 in 50 chance to drop an adamant longsword which is another 1.5k and a 1 in 50 chance to drop a rune simi which is incredibly useful if you haven't got one already and also 15k profit. The XP here is decent too as although you're using a low level spell you almost always hit so you get constant XP. This method is risky for low level hardcore iron men as the warriors can max hit 8 and occasionally if they are too far north when you hit them they will move the wrong side of the lava pool and to safe spot them you have to run back around again. But if you are a hardcore iron man and you prefer to level up your magic for free in a safe spot rather than a place where you're making money you can do this at the birth orb guards from this spot here. The guards also have no magic defense so can be killed at a very low level. You're out of their attack range here, but when they try to flee, they get stuck on the wall, meaning they never attack you. This method though is about break even, but you'll get some supplies such as arrows and a few high level runes as well. But it's really best for just leveling up magic for free, and I wanted to include it without the risk of Zami Warriors. Another method you can do at a very low level is collecting steel plate bodies from the wilderness. Sorry hardcore iron men, this method isn't for you either, as you go past some PK hotspots here, but there are timestamps below and plenty of other money makers that you can do later in the video. To do this all you're going to need is a knife or a slash weapon, a little bit of food if you are low level, and if you can make a burning amulet it will save you some time, but it's not essential. If you have level 55 magic you can make more here by bringing high alchemy runes, but this method is in the wilderness and whilst it's rare to see PKs where the plate bodies are, you will run past the teleport spot and be in combat at the same time, so if you are very unlucky you may get caught by a PK. So to get there either use your burning amulet if you have one to teleport to the lava maze, or if you don't to get to the lava maze use the last man standing minigame teleport which takes you to Ferox Enclave. From there, run north and slightly west to the start of the lava maze, and after you are there, either from using the burning amulet or running, slash the web and run east on the northern path until you see three paths heading north, use the furthest one to the east, the last path, run north, slash the web and follow the path around. You will see some lesser demons which have a max hit of 8 and a steel plate body on the floor. Pick up the steel plate body and then simply hot world and keep collecting them. If a lesser demon attacks you, meaning you can't log out, simply run a few squares west and it will lose aggro on you. After you have collected them, if you can't high alk, it's best to sell them to Horvick between Varric Square and the East Bank, as he pays high alchemy price for them and more than a general store. However, you will need to sell a few in Hot Worlds as the price goes down the more you sell. 
This method is 120,000 GP per hour or 200,000 GP per hour if you high alg at the plate body spot, which saves you running to and from the wilderness every inventory. And the next low level money maker requires just 20 thieving and is another one where you can also skill at the same time. In RD, you can steal from the silk stall to the north, getting 24 XP and one piece of silk each time, and you can steal around 680 pieces per hour. After around 30 minutes to an hour's time has passed that you have been logged into the game for, the silk merchant will forget you have just robbed him blind and will buy the silk back from you for 60 GP each piece. What a nice guy. Talk to him with the silk in your inventory and ask if he wants to buy some fine silk. Then select 120 coins, he will then try to negotiate with you and on the second option select 60 coins to get the best price you can. This method gets you around 41,000 GP per hour as well as 16,500 thieving XP too. Before we carry on I also want to give a mention to 5 skills not in this list which are all good skills to train whilst making money, but I won't go into these too much as they're pretty obvious. The good consistent money making skills you want to train just for GP is wood cutting and fletching, making the bows and either high alking them or if you're a low level simply selling them to a general store, mining and smithing items and then either high alking again or selling them to the weapons and armor shops that stock them for a higher price and finally thieving. These skills will be constant money makers for you at all levels. Number 17 requires at least 30 agility but I recommend 45 or more and that is the agility pyramid in the southeast of the desert. You're also going to need some food and some water skins and some desert clothing which can be bought from the shanty pass. Every time you go to the top of the pyramid you collect the pyramid top which Simon will give you 10,000 GP for. However to get to the top you go around each level completing obstacles but if you fail you fall down one level. At level 30 agility you are unlikely to complete many laps at all and at level 50 you rarely fail. But don't be put off too much if you are level 30, even if you're not completing the course the experience is reasonable and you will level up as you try to complete it. Another thing to note is always turn in the pyramid top each time you complete the course as it's very heavy and will cause you to fail a lot more if you carry it around with you and go for a second one before cashing it in. This method is 260,000 GP per hour once you stop failing, but realistically about 200,000 per hour around the level 50 mark. The ham store rooms is a good money maker that has low requirements, but a few quests that need to be completed first. To do this you're going to need 17 mining, 23 thieving and 23 agility, which are the requirements to complete the quests, room mysteries, goblin diplomacy, the lost tribe and death to the Dorgashin. Once you have completed those quests you can access the area below the ham hideout where you went in the last quest and pickpocket the guards for keys. You will also get a few other items that you may choose to keep such as a steel axe, gems and herbs. Once you have almost a full inventory of keys leaving a few spaces of room, either squeeze through the cracks in the wall or pick lock the doors to access the small rooms. Each room has one chest that certain keys unlock and will give you uncharged jewellery, GP or occasionally gems. This method is not only a fantastic money maker, but you get a lot of useful jewellery that normally require reasonably high crafting levels to make, including diamond amulets and rings which only need enchanting, requiring 57 magic to make amulets of power and rings of life. Once you have the jewellery, don't sell them to the general store, instead go to Portsurum Jewellery Shop as they pay a lot more for them. It's up to you if you want to sell a few per world to make a little bit more money or just sell them all in one go or you can even bank them each trip and then sell them noted later. I was very unlucky on this trip and didn't even get a ruby item but you will normally get a few and the odd diamond item as well and make 25k per inventory. You can do up to 7 inventories per hour so we'll make 100 to 175,000 GP depending on your level as well as 6,000 thieving XP. Next up we have two skilling bosses, Temporos and Winter Todd. Both are good ways to train but they also give rewards that can make you GP. Most players know about these so I won't go into it too much in depth on how to do these bosses but there are some amazing guides on them if you haven't done them before. You need 50 fire making and I recommend some clue hunter clothing which reduces the damage you take for Winter Todd. The rewards you can get include logs which can be fletched and sold, ores that can be smithed and sold and gems that can be turned into jewellery as well as some GP. Temporos requires 35 fishing and you can take a boat southwest of Alcarid straight there. 
Not only do you get fishing XP, but you get very useful unique rewards, a ton of raw food, some planks which will save you loads of GP later, and the item which gives you money which is the casket. The casket contains many items such as rune items, jewellery, gems, coins and even clue scrolls. Both Winterthal and Temporos are not the best pure money makers, but they give a ton of items and XP whilst making a reasonable amount, so are definitely worth considering. Up next is a daily money maker and depending on your Varric achievement diary, Zaf in the staff shop just northwest of Varric Square will sell you some battle staffs cheaper than usual at 7k each once per day. If you completed the easy diary you can buy 15 from him, medium is 30, hard is 60 and elite is 120. At 54 crafting or above you can then attach an orb to the top and high out them for 9.3k each meaning 34.5k profit for the easy diary, 69k for the medium, 138k for the hard and 276k for the elite. Those are all of the low level money makers and these next ones tend to be a lot more money but require higher stats. The first mid level money maker requires either 70 strength or 70 agility, plus at least one Sara, one Bandos and one Zami item, plus an Armadil item if you don't have 70 agility. For a Zami item you can kill Monks of Zamorak for a robe top or bottom, for Sara you can pick up a Monks robe top or bottom at the Monastery, and for Armadil you can use the pendant from the quest the Temple of Ikov. However for the Bandos item you're going to need to be lucky from Clue Scrolls to get one, or you can use an Ancient Mace from the quest another slice of ham, but it will slow down your profit considerably. Once you have those head over to the Wilderness God Wars dungeon with your best weapon and start killing any low level creatures for an ecumenical key. Make sure to have Skulling disabled as occasionally you will see the odd PKer. These keys are between a 1 in 40 and a 1 in 60 drop chance depending on your Wilderness Achievement Diary completion and they high alk for 61.5k each. Every creature has the same chance of dropping them so by killing the low level ones you can kill quite a lot per hour and depending on your gear and level you should average around 10 keys which is 615,000 GP. Number 11 is not the best money maker but I wanted to include it as it's the Kingdom of Miscellanea. Normally just consider the money sink in order to get items, it can also be used to make a profit. The downside to this is obviously it means tying up a lot of GP which always hurts as an Iron Man but realistically you're probably going to do it anyway for supplies here. To access the Kingdom of Miscellanea and get the best rates you're going to need to have completed the Royal Trouble quest and have 100% favour on Miscellanea. This is the average return you will get each day when you deposit 7.5 million, although you don't have to do that much. You can put in as much or as little as you like. For this example with 7.5 million each day it takes 75k out of the pot and you get the following resources every 10 workers you use. If you put 10 workers into normal wood you will get an average of 892 maple logs, a few birds nests plus you can put the other 5 workers into whatever you want for free. Those 892 maple logs if fletched into longbows can be done in just over 30 minutes and will be worth 192 GP each so that's a total of 171,000 GP and if strung which takes another 30 minutes or so makes them worth 384 GP each which works out at 342,000 GP. By this stage you will probably have a ton of nature runes to high alk them, but if not it will be a little bit less selling them to a store such as the rogues den which pays high alk price. Again this is not the best money maker but it makes miscellanea profitable while still getting resources plus you get the fletching xp too. The top 10 is the higher level combat money makers and in all of these methods it's just the cash you make from the alkable weapons and armor as well as bars and logs that can be made into items and alk as well. So you may actually find some of the things here are less money but actually better methods if a certain creature also drops some useful supplies or a rare item like a visage. But before we start a quick shout out to some very respectable creatures who aren't that high of a level but didn't quite make the top 10 and that is Gargoyles, Dust Devils and Virewatch which all make around 200 to 250,000 GP per hour. At number 10 is Skeletal Wyverns which require 72 Slayer to kill. Gear and stats always vary considerably as an Iron Man, but with decent gear and stats you should expect to kill around 40 to 45 per hour. 
Alking the Rune and Dragon Drops will make you around 225,000 GP. And if you have the levels to smith the Adibar Drops and fletch the Magic Logs into bows, that will boost it up to 350,000 GP per hour. Whilst number 9 is low down on the list, it's definitely one to consider due to the Dragon Warhammer drop, and the fact that you only need 100% Shazian favour, and even if your gear isn't the best, it doesn't matter as you use the Shazian armour. Lizardman Shaman drop a lot of alcohols and very useful items such as high level seeds and herbs, and will make you 300 to 350,000 GP each hour. Number 8 is a place that you will undoubtedly be going to at some point for the Xanite Shard anyway, and that is Demonic Gorillas. These just require the completion of Monkey Madness 2 to be killed, they drop 340,000 GP worth of Alcaballs per hour, and 70,000 in Addy and Rune Bars, making this 410,000 GP in total. The 7th best creature is a creature that most players avoid, and it isn't considered very good at all, and requires 82 Slayer. But the Ancient Wyvern has a good drop table of rune items and battle staffs and can be killed fairly quickly. If you bank the bones you will get a lot less kills per hour and make around 350,000 GP. It's unlikely you will want to simply bury them but if you do it goes up to around 450,000. In 6th place requires you to complete the Song of the Elves quest and a long quest chain as well as having 70 in many stats. But once you have those, you can do the Corrupted Gauntlet for a good amount of GP, as well as a chance at those amazing upgrades such as the Enhanced Crystal Weapon Seed, the Crystal Armor and Tools. That alone is worth doing the Corrupted Gauntlet or even Normal Gauntlet for, and you will also make 580,000 GP if you can get 6 kills per hour. In the top 5 I could have put Barraging Dust Devils, Greater Necreals and Smoke Devils, but they are really only good if you ignore the cost of the runes, but if you do have more runes than you will ever need, they are also very good methods that didn't make the list. Number 5 is a big blue dragon with an attitude and a zombie spawn for a friend. Vorkath requires completion of Dragon Slayer 2 and has killed her fair share of hardcore Iron Men. But as well as dropping the Visage and giving you a head, a Dragon and Rune Drops will make you 620,000 gold pieces per hour. Number 4 is very risky, especially after the recent updates to the Revenant Caves, making them even more popular with PKs. But the risk is definitely worth considering since they drop 250,000 in Ancient Items, 500,000 in Alcaballs, and another 120,000 in Supplies that can be made into Alcaballs meaning you can make 870,000 GP here, plus they also drop over 1 million more in non alkables and you can do this at a pretty low level. Just try not to get frustrated when you get PK'd by someone who is 5 stone ringing wet in his mum's basement who hasn't seen light for 10 years and tells you to sit. <laughs> Sorry, I meant when you die to some very skilled PKer. Number 3 won't surprise many at all and requires 77 Slayer, which isn't too bad considering the money you get here. But the money here is dependent on you being able to craft the Black Dehyde into items and Alkit is on their own, the drops are worth 550k but the Black Dehyde will add another 400k on top of it. A great money maker that also drops a Visage and you're going to get plenty of Dragon Bones too. And in second place is Ruined Dragons, which require the completion of Dragon Slayer 2 and also has another long quest chain, with stats required in the 50s, 60s and 70s. Rune Dragons though can be killed at mid-level, although they do a decent amount of damage. With decent gear averaging 50 kills per hour, you make 450,000 from Alcable drops, but the main part of the money here and the biggest requirement is being able to smith the Rune Bars which will take this method from 450k gold per hour to 1,050,000 GP. And only slightly better in terms of GP made and with a huge 95 Slayer requirement is the Alchemical Hydra. However, you can also get leather, claw and pieces for the Brimstone Ring here, as well as a load of high level herbs and runes. So if you're going for those items over prayer from the Dragon Bones, you can get a Rune Dragons. This will net you 1.1 million GP per hour. Hopefully I have covered everything for you for your Iron Man account and given you a money maker regardless of your level. But as I mentioned earlier at the beginning, these are also good for leagues since we're all Iron Man and I have one extra as a bonus just for Leagues 3. They have finally decided to give us some more information on Leagues 3. 
and they've told us a few of the fragments, and they have come up with a very, very clever idea. They want to keep endless run in leagues, but by doing so it renders agility pretty useless, apart from getting league points. So they have added the following perk, called Golden Brick Road. At level 1, when you get a mark of Grey Spawn, you will also get 4000 GP on the ground with it. At level 2, it's 7000 GP, and at level 3, you get 15000 GP every mark of Grace. At level 60 on the Canifus course, you can get around 20 marks of Grace per hour, and with the level 3 perk, that's going to give us a really big 300,000 GP per hour, only training up one skill. And speaking of leagues, I'm going to go head to head with the master of animations, Skuld. In the series, we will have 4 hours each episode to level up, gear up and unlock these powerful fragments in Leagues 3, and after every 4 hours, we will battle it out to see who is victorious, with the loser having to high out their best item or fragment. At the end of the series, we will have one final battle to decide who is the League's 3 winner. So please join us for that, and if you want to see some of Skull's amazing old school RuneScape animations, I've linked this channel below.